Hello and welcome everybody to 7 Days to Die Alpha 18 Advanced Trips, Tips and Tricks Volume 2. Uh, today we're going to be going over easy advanced rotation options uh, so you can speed up your building complex structures, uh, hot key uses in operation of the blue fill block in a live game. A lot of people have always wanted to know how to do the blue block. Uh, which is a little different from the prefab editor. Uh, learning how to compare a modded weapon versus an unmodded weapon without removing your mods. Uh, this one can be complicated, so fair warning. Uh, talk brief briefly about breaching ammo, uh, how to remove the camera from your character to take great screenshots, and finally, how good is Turret Syndrome 5? So let's get into it. Uh, now, if you look down at my hot bar, You'll see I have multiple shapes assigned. Uh, now, what I've done is I've taken a full stack of wet concrete blocks and I've bro broken them up basically evenly and pl placed them down into every spot in my heart bar. I've assigned a different shape to each one and also a different rotation. Uh, and as long as they stay there, in your hot bar and you don't move them out they will remember the rotation that they have now my, watching most people do these things say you wanted to do an advanced uh, thing around the column what most people will do is they'll take their they'll do a copy rotation and then they'll run to each each place they need to go and put that block in or multiple blocks, whatever it works out. Then they'll come back, they'll change the shape, copy rotation on the next block, run around, teach an individual one, and set it. But there's there's a quicker way. If you break it up and put a different block with different rotation in each spot, you can just go around and do them all just with a tiny scroll of the mouse. It's much quicker and much easier because each advanced rotation on a block, there's 24 rotations. So it will save you time especially if you're doing multiple advanced rotations. Okay, uh, part two. Let me get rid of these blocks real quick. Whoop. Set my hot bar back up. This is how I, the setup I run, uh, when I'm in late game. Now don't you do that. I'm doing this for a specific reason. You'll know why. But now let's uh let's go over the blue block. So let's teleport to a flat area a fairly flat area. Uh let's pull up our map. For those of you that don't know how to teleport quickly, uh be in debug mode, uh hit F one, hit type in DM. Uh go to your map Hold down your control button and right click. And you'll teleport to wherever it was. Now as you can see I've already done one little section here. But let's do another one. Now if, when you're in debug mode go to wherever you want to start. Say you want to get rid of all the grass, all the uh, bird's nests, the uh, the wood, the uh, cotton, whatever will keep you from being able to place a block. You point it where you want to start and hit the Z key. And that's Z as in zebra. You run over to where you want it to end. You hit Z again. Everything between those two points will be highlighted in a large blue box. Now, to clear that section, you hit the K button. K is in king. 
A little window will come up. You'll hit the second option, Dy dynamic prefabs. You click it, and then come up and hit clear selection. Now, hit escape to get rid of that box. But to get rid of the blue box, the only way you can get rid of that is to hit your backspace key. Now, as you can see, this block down here was lower. If you want it to go even lower, do it again. Or you can come over here and do it farther, which would probably be better. Type it again, hit your K key, dynamic prefabs, clear selection. Hit your backspace, and now you've made a big hole. <laughs> you can go all the way to bedrock like that if you want to. All right, let's move on. Uh, let's go to removing your camera. How do you remove your camera? so you can take dynamic screenshots. All right, first thing you want to do is you want to hit F7 to get rid of your HUD. Hit F5, this will put you in third person mode. If you move around right now, you're in third person mode. All right, to get out of third person mode, hit F5 again. But we want to stay in third person mode and hit the P key. That's P as in Paul. That will free your camera from your body and lock your camera in place. Now you can move around your character wherever you want it. Take your screenshot by hitting F9. Now, to get out of this mode, you just go in reverse. Hit P to lock your camera back into your body. F5 to get out of third person mode. And F7 to turn your HUD back on. Okay. Uh, let's head back and we'll do something else. So we're going to pull our map up. We're going to hold down control and right click. Alright. We're back. I'll tell you what, while we're here let's show you this. It's not really that advanced. But this is how everybody enters the trader. They open the door, they walk through, they turn around, they close the door. But you don't have to. The door is closed. If you, well, while you're walking up to the door, if you just double hit E real quick as you're walking through, it'll open and close, and there's no need to stop, turn around and reclose it. Now, this does not work on the desert traders with the single door, only the double door traders. Uh, just so you know. Alright, let's talk a little bit about breaching ammo. Now, this is the setup I run uh, when I'm playing. I run two turrets, an M60, and a shotgun with breaching ammo, an auger, and a chainsaw. Now, you can get through all these doors pretty quick with an auger. This one not so much. Because it's three layers thick. Same thing with the vault door, but I'm not going to do that. But here's your breaching ammo. Two shots. Vault door, two shots. Breaching ammo is well worth investing in if you're going uh, scavenging. Whoop, hip, actually looking at F5. But it's, it's well worth looking into. All right, uh, I'll tell you what. Let's check out turret syndrome real quick. Now, I am turret syndrome level 5, and I have two fully modded turrets. Now, as you can see, well, this is not fully reloaded, but they hold almost 300 rounds each, 
and they fire much faster upgrade once you've upgraded your turret center than they do when you're first starting out so I'll tell you what let's uh before I do that I want to make sure I don't have the AI locked let's do a uh A zombie bear. Yep, he's locked. Go ahead and get rid of him. Go ahead and put our turrets down. They're both active at the same time because I'm level 5. Uh, let's spawn in another zombie bear. Let the turrets take care of it. Took him out just as fast as the M60 did. Let's try something else. Let's say you're uh, using these when you're clearing a POI and you're high level with the high game stage and you're running into a lot of radiates. Still a zombie white. He was just down, not out. They fire so fast, he can't even get moving to come towards you. Let's uh, try one more. Let's try a uh, radiated zombie biker. See, they stopped shooting at the... Uh, white because he was hidden behind the bears for a while but turret syndrome is something well worth looking into uh, because it works just as good late game once you've leveled it up as it does early game okay well, let's get on to the last one comparing modded weapons and items against unmodded without actually having to remove the mods now this one were, was requested by Killtech. Uh, he's a member of Vidui's Discord. If you're not familiar with Vidui, he's a gamer who also does 7 Day to Die content. He does a lot of testing videos, base build tests against the Blood Moon Hordes and such. Uh, his Discord is full of friendly, helpful gamers, and the link is in his Discord, or the link to his Discord is on his page. Uh, so I'm going to post a link to his channel in the description below. So if you'd like to check him out, uh, I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Uh, watch some of his videos, and if you like his comments, be sure and subscribe and leave him a comment saying Mr. Knuckles sent you. Okay. Uh, first thing you need to remember, always, whenever testing, are looking to see if something's better make sure if it's a gun you do not have hollow point ammunition loaded now the armor piercing and the and the regular 762 are both the same but the armor piercing see how it's got a range damage of 112 it shouldn't be that high I don't know why anybody would carry armor piercing. Uh, I'm going to lock the AI just for a second. And I'm going to show you why. If you're a higher game stage... Whoop. What did I do? Now. There you go. Now you're locked. If you're higher game stage... Now let's take a look at him. Let's pull up his stats. He's still full health. He hasn't taken one point of damage. At all.
So unless you know you're not going to run, run on to a uh, armored soldier or well, you're not going to run on the other one unless it's a uh, horde knight, the demolisher. But the soldier takes zero damage against a uh, hollow point ammunition, just to let you know. Now let's look at our stats again now that I've changed it. Now it's down to 83. Okay, that's where it's supposed to be. Now as far as bows, compounds bows, you want to make sure you don't have iron or steel, steel arrows in them. Uh, if you do, don't think just by, see down here how I've got armor piercing in here. Don't think you can modify and unload it and it all will be good because it still shows armor piercing ammo. You actually have to reload it with something with either the uh, stone arrows or whatever even if you don't have them it'll t it'll take it out and it puts the regular ammo back in for the uh, so it'll show you your exact stats on it okay uh, let's get into let me pull over a First, let's uh, let's spawn something in. Let's do a M60. Let's try to get a five. There's a five. Now this is r random stats on this five. Now I know from experience that. The M60 fully modded adds 17 to your uh, damage. So, if I click on my M60 and hover over this one, 17 from 25 is 8. This level 5 does 8 less damage than my level 6. Now, let's see if I'm right. negative eight okay now this uh, one thing you need to remember every every mod that you put on adds the same to the gun no matter what it is it does not matter doesn't matter if it's a light doesn't matter if it's a scope whatever there's only one exception to that and then that's li this little booger right here. Uh, my suggestion is never put on a silencer, and I'll show you why. Range damage 66 with no mods. It drops by three. Now, you might think to yourself, well, that's not big of that big of a deal. Drop them by three. But if it's your fourth mod, damage is 77. If you take it out and put in the other one, it's 83. You're losing 6. Actually, no. You, let's see, what was it? Forgot now. 77. Yeah, you're losing 6 damage overall. So... It's your choice whether you want to use it or not. If you're a stealth player, uh, that's that's fine. But just keep in mind, you're going to lose a lot of damage on your weapons. So make sure you're aware of that. Now let me pull you over the notepad that I made up. Now you can take a screenshot of this, or you can pause the video. Uh, however you want to do it I made a this one's a little more detailed uh, you don't need to know all this This is just going to confuse you but I put it there just so you can understand not every mod does the same damage or adds the same damage the first two slots your first two mods will add four each no matter what mods they are 
Your third mod will add five. Your fourth mod will add four for a total of 17. If you only have two mods in it, it's always going to be plus eight, no matter what. No matter what the mods, it doesn't matter. Now that's to the M60. Now the Fun Pimps, I think, did this on purpose. Uh, they made the mods add differently to each gun and in different stages. Uh, if you look, I've got the 4.2 average here. This is all I, I, I try to remember whenever I remember what it's going to be. And I only remember the guns I use as a basic rule. Uh, now, if you print this out, you can have it near you if you want. Or you can take the mods off and check it that way. That's totally fine. But I memorized most of these. And like I said, any gun that's not a gun that I use all the time, I always sell it anyway. And I take the money I make, or the dukes I make from it, and I smelt them down for brass to make, and also take the ammo I don't use and sell it to the trader and take the dukes I make and, sell, and melt, smelt them down for brass so I can make the ammo I do use. Whoop, where did that? All right, let's bring that back over. Like here, I only remember 4.2 for the M60. And, you know, one is 4.2, it's going to round down to 4. Another one's going to be 8.4, round down to 4. This is going to be 12.6, it's going to round up to 13. And, of course, that's how they get these separate numbers. Uh, bows, your primitive and your wooden, add 2 no matter what. The compound and crossbow is 2.4, which causes the range to vary from 2 to 3 to 2 to 3. Uh, let me show you real quick. Right. 66, the first mod's going to do 4. The next mod's going to do 4. The next one's going to do 5. It's going to go to 79. And the last one's going to do 4. It's going to go to 83. That's always the same. No matter what. It doesn't matter what the mod is. Unless it's this little booger. Which I, I avoid them at all costs. As far as ammo goes. Or armor goes. Looking at this armor. If you're wearing armor, it'll automatically compare to it. You don't have to click on it. But you need to know if you have a plating mod in it. That's the only thing that matters. This one adds two. This one adds one. Okay? Now, by looking at this... I can tell you this level 3 is better than my level 6. Because my level 6 has the metal plating mod in it that adds plus 2 to the light armor. This one that looks like blue plastic adds plus 1. So it's plus 1. The one I have adds plus 2. So this military vest is actually 2 points better than my level 6. So... I'm going to remove my level 6. Remove the mods. Mod my level 3. Oh. That's right. I only got two slots in it. But it's still better. See? Light armor rating 14. Light armor rating 10. Right. 
I remove the mods and compare them. It's 12 and 10. Minus 2. That's just something to keep in mind. Uh, look over those uh, that chart if you want to. Uh, if you think you can remember how that works, uh, that's fine. Uh, if not, that's fine too. It's uh, not everybody's going to be able to to do it. So if you can, maybe it'll help you. Uh, anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Please remember to subscribe and hit the like button uh, if you enjoyed the video. And remember to check out Madui's page. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, see you next time. Have a great day.